everyone, I'm pro photographer Ian Plant, and we all have those moments where we just get stuck in a creative rut and we lose our inspiration and motivation to get out there and make photos. I call this creative depression. And if it happens to you, don't worry about it. You're not alone. It happens to all of us. It happens to me all the time. In this video, I'm gonna discuss ways that you can jumpstart your creativity to find your inspiration again and to get your photography groove back. So if you wanna learn more, then stay tuned. So what are the causes of creative depression? Well, it could just be caused by normal everyday stuff in your life, stress, work, etc. Or it could just be seasonal. So for example, where I live in Minnesota, it's been a really boring winter. It hasn't been that cold. There's been barely any snow. Everything just looks drab and dreary. And I really haven't had much motivation for getting out to make photographs. And I anticipate that when things switch over to spring, I'm gonna find more inspiration and I'm gonna be compelled to get out and do some more photography. So it could very well just be the everyday stuff in your life that is stifling your creativity and reducing your motivation. But more often than not, I find that creative depression is the result when my photo expectations don't match reality. And so this often occurs to me if I go on a trip to a destination that I'm really excited about. And I get there and conditions really aren't working out and I just don't feel like I'm making good photos. And so I have this dream in my head of making these amazing images. And then I crashed hard into reality and I found out that instead I was just frustrated and I wasn't making the photographs that I had hoped to make. This happened to me recently when I was on a trip to Antarctica. And during the trip, I just didn't really feel like I was making good photos. So a lot of times I'll come back from a trip like that and I'll just be really depressed because I wasn't getting the photos that I was hoping to get. And the best thing you can do to deal with that is to take a break after you get back of about a week or two before you sit down and start reviewing and editing and processing your files. And so when I got back, I took a step away from the photos, let my expectations come down to a more reasonable level. And then I looked through my image files and found out that there were actually a lot of good photos there. And I was a lot happier about the images I had made because I had taken that time than if I had looked at them while my expectations were still riding unreasonably high. And another time that creative depression can occur is when you feel you're at an artistic plateau. And unfortunately, this is the way it usually goes. You'll have these moments of inspiration where you have an epiphany and you start seeing the world in a different way, or you figure out a new technique for making photos. And at that moment, your photography gets a lot better. But those moments of inspiration are kind of few and far between. Usually you're riding these long plateaus in between these moments of inspiration. You may be growing and advancing as an artist, but it seems to be moving very slowly. And when you're on these slowly progressing plateaus, it can be relatively easy to feel discouraged and you can find your inspiration for photography getting lower and lower. So here are a few of the ways that I use to get my creative juices flowing again. The first thing I might try is simply to take a break from photography. Creative depression might be your brain's way of telling you to lay off for a while. And sometimes all you need to do is take a vacation from your photography to recharge your mental batteries and to find your inspiration again. So step away for two or three weeks or a month if you need to. And then when you come back, you're gonna be more fresh. You're gonna be rested and recharged and ready to get creative again. Another thing that you can do to get your mojo back is to plan a trip to a photo destination that you know is gonna be productive for you. The kind of place where it's easy to make really great photos. And notice that I didn't say that you should plan a trip to a bucket list destination, because if you go to a place that you've never been to before, that you've always wanted to photograph, your expectations may be really high. And if it doesn't work out as planned, then you might find the creative depression getting worse. So instead, I go to one of those 
easy places. It's a comfort place. Think of it as like a, a comfort food. When you need that quick endorphin fix and you want to feel better, you reach for the chocolate cake. Well, you want to go to the chocolate cake of photo destinations. Go somewhere where you know you're going to make great photos. And so I've been feeling a little creative depression myself recently. So I took a trip to the South Central Desert of Utah. It's a place I've been to many times. Every time I go, I know that I'm going to find beautiful scenery. I'm going to have great weather. I'm going to have a lot of good photo subjects to work with. And so I know that I'm going to walk away with 20 or 30 photos that I'm really happy with. And sure enough, it did the trick. I went there, I spent a week making photos and it was easy. It was fun. It was productive. I walked away feeling a lot better. And that trip was exactly what I needed. I'd had some creative depression because it had been such a dreary winter for me. And so this allowed me to shake that off. And now I feel like I've got some creative momentum going into the spring, I'm ready to hit the ground running and to make some amazing photographs for the rest of the year. Another thing that you can do to shake off your creative depression is to try something completely new. Try a different type of photography that you haven't done before. So for example, if you've never done macro photography, try macro photography, see if you like it. In the past, I have taken on different types of photography and that has allowed me to grow and evolve as an artist. I used to only shoot landscape photography and then when I was in a creative rut about that, I started doing wildlife photography and that expanded my photo opportunities and it helped enhance my creative vision. And I've also taken up street photography at one point and I'm constantly evolving as an artist, trying new and different types of photography. And it's helping refine my creative eye. It's forcing me to see the world in new and creative ways. And overall, it makes me a better photographer. It makes me a better artist. If you don't want to try something completely new, then you can take on a smaller challenge and maybe start working on a specific project or a portfolio of images. So you think of a particular theme, give yourself a creative self-assignment, and then you start working to make photos that match that theme. And I've been doing that over the past year. I started working on a portfolio of aerial images taken with my drone of salt marshes. And it's been a really great project. I'm making these abstract photos that capture all of these beautiful textures and patterns and colors that you can see in the marshes from above. And it's something completely different. No one that I know of is really doing this sort of thing. And so it's allowing me to produce a unique body of work and it really gets my creative juices flowing. I love working on this project. I do it whenever I can. And whenever I have free time in my schedule and that creative depression starts seeping in, I start thinking about how I can get back to the salt marshes so I can make more photos and take this project to the next level. So it's been real exciting for me and I'm still working on it and I can't wait to see where this goes over the next year. Another thing I like to do when I feel those creative walls closing in on me, when I'm stuck at home and I'm not able to travel or get out and make the photos that I want, I take a deep dive into my digital dumpster, which is what I call the place where I keep all of the raw files that I have taken in the past 20 years as a professional photographer. And I like to go into these files every now and then and sort through them and see if there are any that are worth processing. And it's amazing to me that I will often go in and find photos that I had overlooked before that are actually quite good and that deserve to be shared. So going through these old raw files that I had deemed unworthy in the past and finding those overlooked diamonds in the rough and then bringing them to life and sharing them with my audience, that just makes me feel really great. It gives me a real positive jolt of energy and it helps to shake off that creative depression. And it's nice because it allows you to see how you've progressed as an artist. And you can look back at these old files from 10 or 15 years ago and say to yourself, wow, I've gotten a lot better. But it's always fun when you find one of those images that you hadn't noticed before and you realize that even back then you were still making effective photos. Finding those diamonds in the rough and dusting off those old files and seeing how good they really can be and then bringing them to life in the digital darkroom, that always makes me feel a lot better about myself.
And there is one more final technique that I use for shaking off my creative depression. And it's arguably the most important and probably also the easiest to implement. And so what happens when you're out there making photos and you're not feeling inspired, you just don't have any motivation. You don't take your camera out of your camera bag. And that's a huge mistake. So first of all, if you're not taking pictures, then well, you're not gonna be making any pictures. You're simply not gonna get any good photos if you don't even try. But sometimes what you need to break through that creative depression is to get your eye behind the lens, to actively engage in the artistic process of making photographs. I know that when I start doing that, when I force myself, even if I'm not inspired, even if I have no motivation for photography at all, if I force myself to get behind the lens and I start engaging in that process, that gets my creative juices flowing. I immediately have an endorphin boost as I'm trying to figure out a way to work with what I've got and to make it into an effective photograph. Just solving that visual puzzle, working through that process is usually enough to get my creative juices flowing. So even if I don't think that the conditions are very good, I just do my very best to force myself to embrace what I have and to try to find a way to make effective images, to make compelling images, no matter what the conditions are. So forcing yourself to get behind the lens and to actively engage in that process is the best thing you can do to jumpstart your creativity. It's all about finding a way to build up some creative momentum, to be moving forward, to be feeling positive about your work rather than standing still and feeling negative. Because I don't know about you, but I know that I love photography. The very act of making photos is usually enough to put me in a better mood. And sometimes that's all you need is just embracing that artistic process. Pushing yourself to do it is enough to get you feeling more creative. And that's when you start seeing the world in a different way. Chances are, it's those moments when you're at your lowest and you're just pushing yourself as hard as you can to keep going and to engage in that artistic process. Those are the moments when you're gonna have your creative epiphanies and you're gonna suddenly realize, you know what? I didn't think things were good, but this is a better photo shoot than I thought. There is something new here, something different, some new way of seeing that I've now figured out. And those are the moments where you're gonna break free from that creative plateau and have that sudden increase in your artistic abilities. So the next time you find yourself stymied by creative depression, don't despair. Use these tips to help find yourself a way out. And hopefully, you'll emerge as a stronger photographer. I'm Ian Plant, wishing you good luck and great light. Thanks for joining me. Bye-bye.